Hi, this is Asin. Today I would like to share the Taylor expansion of loan cost x at the point x equal to 1. In other words, the McNally expansion of loan cost x. First, we let fx be loan cost x. So at point Equal x equal to 0, we have cost 0, which is equal to 1, and loan 1 is equal to 0. Then we differentiate with respect to x. Differentiate loan function, we will have the reciprocal, meaning to say 1 over cost x. Don't forget to differentiate cost x as well using the chain rule. So we have negative sine x. So this is equivalent to negative tangent x. So at point x equal to 0, tangent 0 is equal to 0. Negative 0 will still be 0. If we continue to differentiate this function, we will realize that it will result in secant squared. So let's say we continue to differentiate the function, we will actually reach a complicated function that involves secants and tangent. So if let's say we are trying to avoid differentiating a rational complicated function, so what we can do here is we use an alternative. This alternative method is somehow useful when we have a complicated rational function. So let's see how it works. From the first derivative, we have f prime x is equal to negative sine x over cos x. So we can actually let sine x be the function g x and the denominator be the function hx so from here we have gx is equal to sine x so at point x equal to 0 so z0 is equal to 0 then we have differentiate sine we have cos so g prime x 3 prime 0 at point 0 is equal to cos 0, which is equal to 1. Then we differentiate for the second time. Then we have differentiating cos, we have negative sine. So sine 0 is equal to 0. Then we differentiate again with respect to x. Differentiate sine, we have cos. So again, we have 0 here. So substitute 0, we have 1. So negative 1, we obtain negative 1. Negative times 1. So we have 1, negative 1. Then we differentiate for the fourth time. Differentiate cos, we will have negative sign. So negative, negative, it becomes positive. So we have sine 0 is equal to 0. And differentiate for the fifth time. Then we obtain cos. So we have 1. Okay, we already obtained three non-zero terms, so we can form our McRowling series for sine x. So gx is equal to 0 over 0 factorial x to the power of 0. We can actually skip all the zero terms if let's say we want. So if let's say we want to do step by step, then we just follow. So next term will be 1 over 1 factorial x to the power of 1. Then plus 0 again over 2 factorial x to the power of 2 
then we have plus negative 1 over 3 factorial x to the power of 3 then we have 0 over 4 factorial x to the power of 4 and the last term we have 1 over 5 factorial x to the power of 5 so we simplify the function we obtain 1x all the zero we can actually ignore so it means that this term no more no more and no more so 1 times x so we obtain x then negative 1 over 3 factorial which is 6 x to the power 3 then 5 factorial we will actually get 120 so plus 1 over 120 x to the power of 5 okay then we proceed to come to produce the function h so for the function h as we can see is actually a cost function so meaning to say it's actually the shift of the function the sine function it just shift one degree so if I say we want to like skip this some steps so we can start from this the second term but remember this is the original function and this will be the first derivative because it's the shift of the sine function so we can have if I say we worry that we will do wrongly we can write a sign so to remind us then we have the third derivative and the fourth derivative now let's form the cos function so we will skip all the zero here starting from remember we have to ignore this as this is sine function our function starting from cos so meaning to say this is the original function so will be zero factorial and then the value is one so one over zero factorial times x to the power of zero then we skip the first derivative as equal to zero then we proceed to the second derivative so we have plus negative 1 over 2 factorial second derivative so 2 factorial x to the power of 2 then we have this done already then third can skip then the fourth so we have plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the power of 4 so we result 1 minus 1 over 2 x square then we will have plus 1 over 4 factorial is equal to 24 x to the power 4 so we already obtained the sine function and the cos function now let's combine the function so we have f prime x is equal to negative gx over hx gx is equal to sine x over cos x so we have negative so the gx the expansion of gx we have x minus 1 over 6 x to the power of 3 plus 1 over 120 x to the power of 5 and so on it's infinite terms of expansion so next we have cos x so 1 minus 1 over 2 x squared plus 1 over 24 x to the power of 4 and so on so from here if let's say we are not differentiating the function continuously but we use alternative i'm not sure whether this method is easier or not but when this method is somehow useful when we have complicated rational function so we may consider this method when we have complicated rational function 
Okay, so what we have to do next is just apply long division. So we have x minus 1 over 6 x to the power 3 plus 1 over 120 x to the power 5 and so on. Then we divide 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 x squared plus 1 over 24 x to the power 4 and so on. So from here, because we know that for any long division, when we divide and we subtract, the first term must be always equal to 0. In order to get 0, we need to take x times 1 equal to x. So that x minus x we obtain 0. Okay, let's proceed. So x times negative 1 over 2x, we have negative 1 over 2 x times x squared so x to the power 3 then we have plus 1 over 24 x to the power 5 and so on then we proceed so we do some subtraction so we have negative 1 over 6 minus minus become plus or we can type minus negative 1 over 2 so we obtain 1 over 3 but positive so plus 1 over 3 positive x cubed then we have 1 over 120 then minus 1 over 24 then we obtain negative 1 over 30 so we minus 1 over 30 x to the power of 5 and so on. So now what we need is plus 1 over 3 x to the power of 3. So we have 1 over 3 x cubed times 1. We obtain 1 over 3 x cubed. Then 1 over 3 times negative so negative positive negative 1 over 3 1 over 2 1 over 6 then x to the power of 5 because the remaining term is actually not important because what we need here is only three the first non-zero three terms then we have okay so negative 1 over 30 minus negative 1 over 6 so negative negative should be positive so we have 2 over 15 so we write here 2 over 15 the first term of course is 0 if we want to write also can if you want also this a method because 0 is nothing not important okay so continue so we have 2 over 15 x to the power 5 and so on so we have 2 over 15 x to the power 5 so we already done it over here okay so meaning to say the first derivative of the function f is equal to x plus 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 plus 2 over 15 to x to the power of 5 and so on be careful this is not the correct expansion as we can see what we have is negative but this is without involving the negative sign so meaning to say we have to times negative for the entire expansion but then as we can see what we need is the function f or what we call the long cost x function but what we obtain here is the first derivative However, we know that if we integrate with respect to x, then we will obtain the original function. So meaning to say we just have to integrate with respect to x for both sides, then we obtain the correct function fx. So when we integrate x power plus 1 over power plus 1, so x 1 plus 1 then we have 2 so 1 over 2 then we do the same thing for the rest so 1 over 3 times 4 which is 12 x to the power of 4 then plus 
Okay, so from here, we can do some calculation. 2 over 15 times 6 because power plus 1. So we obtain 1 over 45. So we have 1 over 45 here, that x to the power of 6 and so on. We don't have to write plus c because we just need the first three non-zero terms. So what we do here, we just have to times everything by negatives. So we have negative 1 over 2 x squared, negative 1 over 12 x to the power of 4, and negative 1 over 45 x to the power of 6 and so on. Then this will be our function loan cos x. Then our expansion is done over here. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you.